This video will talk about the instrumental variables regressions. First, we will talk, talk about the IV estimators. So IV stands for instrumental variables. IV estimator with one regressor and one instrument. Second, we will take a look, extend the model into the general model. Finally, we will talk about the instrument's validity to see whether the instruments are good or bad. So let's start by talking what is the meaning of IV estimator. <coughs> For simplicity, let's take a look at that one regressor and one instrument case. So in the past, you may learn this linear regression model, yi equal to beta 0 plus beta 1xi plus ui, where i is equal to 1, 2, dot, 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 up to n. But it may come across many problems. Say, you may suffer from the orbital variable bias, Omitter variable power is the covariance between x and u are non, not equal to zero, such that the expected value of u given x is not zero. So this violates the OLS assumptions. Therefore, IV is a method to solve this problem. Actually, IV regression is very powerful. As long as you can find a suitable instrument, you can deal with most of the omitter variable bias regression model. So. Okay, given this, the covariance between x and u is non-zero. What you can do <coughs> is to find a suitable instrument or suitable instrumental variable, call it z. So this z should have some property that can solve this problem. So this z has to satisfy these two conditions. First is the instrument's relevance. So this means the correlation between the z i and x i is not equal to zero. So this z should have something correlated with the independent variable x. Second is the instrument exogeneity. So this means the correlation between the instruments and the error are equal to zero. So the instrument has to satisfy these two conditions, instrumental relevance and, instru and instrument exogeneity. So let's take a look of examples. After that, I will talk, I will generalize by a regression model. So this is the, this is where the IV starts. Okay, by the Phillips Weiss problems. So Phillips Weiss problems. So these two are some old guys. Okay, maybe in 1920s century, 2090, 20, 1920s. Okay, so they are, what they are doing is. They are investigating the demand curves of the butter. So they, they do this log butter equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times the price of butter times the ui. So if you just do these regressions, okay, you can just, if you just do this regression, this is very problematic because as you know, so they want to investigate the demand. Well, but there are still many other factors correlated with the price and is a determinant for Q, say the supply, right? Supply will affect the price. Therefore, the P correlation between the P and U are not equal to zero. So if you do these linear regressions, you may suffer from the omitted variable bias. So what they do? So they start to look for the instruments, okay? They have to look for the instrument that has this property. The correlation between the instruments and the price is not equal to zero. That means that instrument will affect the price. Second, the instruments and the UI is equal to zero. That means they, the instrument won't shift the demand curves. So finally, they find the instruments called weather, which can solve the problem. Because first, for the instrument's relevance, the correlation between the price and the weather is not equal to zero. So if the weather is good, okay, so the yield of the butters will be higher. Then supply increase, price will be lower. Second, the weather with the error term of demand is equal to zero. Well, obviously the weather will not di directly affect the demands. So this weather can be one instrument to deal with this omitted variable bias. Okay, now you know how to find the good instruments, but 
what can we do in econometrics to solve these problems? So here comes to the IV regressions. So IV regressions, also called TSLS, as TSLS. So TSLS means two stage least square. So basically, IV is doing two times the linear regression two times. First, you are going to investigate whether the instruments is a whether the independent variables is a is a function of the instruments. So xi is equal to beta this pi zero plus pi one times zi plus vi. Okay, since you don't know what is the value of pi zero and pi i, you have to estimate. So you est the estimate of xi is the pi zero hat plus pi one hat zi. So you are regretting your independent variable with respect to the instruments. Second, you regret the y with respect to your estimate of x. So after that, you can find the beta one hat by the two stage least square. So at the end, the beta one hat, the estimate of the beta one hat will be equal to the sample var sample covariance of z and y derived by sample covariance of z and x. So why this is the case? Now I'm going to prove it. Okay, so we know that the xi hat is equal to beta zero hat, uh, pi zero hat plus pi one hat pi zi. Therefore, the same, the sample covariance between the x and y is equal to. So this is constant. This is the variable. So you take out the constant pi one hat and times the sample covariance of z and y. Okay. On the other hand, the sample sample co sample variance of x hat is equal to pi one hat square times the sample variance of z. Okay, so you you can replace these two variables into the beta one hat. Here you will get that this is equal to pi one hat zy derived by pi one hat square. Okay, therefore the beta 1 hat, so the last equation, beta 1 hat is derived by the covariance between y and x, derived by the variance of x, okay, so here, y and x is y and x i hat, while variance of x is x i hat, okay, so this beta 1 hat is equal to the pi 1, so the co sample covariance between x hat and y. Here derived by the sample variance of x hat here. Okay, then you can simplify it by a little bit. It becomes sample standard sample covariance of z and y derived by pi one hat times the sample covariance of z. Okay. Then what is the value of pi one hat? So pi one hat is derived here so in this regression. Oh no, the first equation. So this is equal to the sample covariance between z and x derived by the variance of z. Okay. So you replace the value of pi and substitute here. You will get okay, beta one hat is equal to s z y derived by s z x derived by sample variance of z times sample variance of z. So these two cancel. What is remaining is sample covariance of z and y derived by sample, co sample covariance of z and x.
so that's how you get the beta 1 head with two stationary square and here this beta 1 head will have the distributions of the normal with some special standard error with the usual standard doesn't normal standard error so here this is the sample sa sample covariance this is the sa sample to covariance so with the law of large number they will approach covariance of zi and yi divided by the covariance of zi and xi and this is exactly the beta 1 so it's large enough the population the sample beta 1 head the estimate of, of the sample sample as beta 1 head will be equal to the population beta 1 and this beta 1 follow the distribution of normal with mean beta 1 and the, and the variance okay so what is the distribution of the variance the variance of beta 1 hat at 2 stage least square is equal to 1 derived by n times the variance of zi minus mu z times ui derived by the square of covariance zi and xi so this is very similar to the beta 1 hat in the OLS so I'm going to prove it okay so beta 1 hat to stage least square is equal to S sample covariance of Z and Y derived by sample covariance of the Z of a Z and X. So let's expand the numerator. Sample covariance of S and Y Z and Y is equal to okay the average minus one times sum of I from one to n time z i minus z bar times y i minus y bar okay so the first term of course i can keep it and for the second term this is equal to so the, the z variable, variable i keep it and y can be replaced by beta 1 x i minus x bar plus u i minus u bar okay so you can separate it into two terms the first term is the beta 1 times uh, times xi minus x bar times zi minus z bar okay so this is beta 1 times sample covariance between z and y z and, z and x so this term is just the same definition of sample covariance plus 1 over n minus 1 okay so z i minus z bar times u i minus u bar so this is also equal to this okay so if i do this sample covariance between z and y derived by sample covariance of z and x so what is sample covariance of z and x this is 1 over a minus 1 times right therefore if you derive this sample covariance of z and y and you derive here you will get beta 1 plus Z i minus Z times U i derived by sum of i from one equal to n to n Z i minus Z bar times X i minus X bar. Okay. Then if you multiply one derived by n in both numerator and denominator, you will get the formula. So this is the. So if you square it. 
Hello. So this is exactly the sample standard deviations. Okay.